The first speaker will be Graham Bell from Europe uh, uh, Nostra, who is uh, going to speak about uh, uh, most endangered, uh, uh, Europe Nostra seven most endangered program and the Buzludach monument in Bulgaria. Uh, Graham, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, friends of IASC, this is where I want to take you by the end of my presentation. But I want to start with this, which is a coin. It happens to be a 200 forint coin. And I, I want to start with this because it sums up the principles of what I want to talk to you about. I could argue it sums up the principles of this conference. On one side, it says 200 forints. It's measurable, it's tangible, it's the economy. On the other side is the symbolism. This one happens to have the Sechenyi Hid, designed, of course, by British engineers, Scotland's, for the moment, Scotland is still in Britain. <laughs> By tomorrow, who knows? But each coin in most currencies has the measurable, the tangible, and the immeasurable, the intangible. The currency of the economy and the symbolism of nationality. We have something here which represents in some ways, the conflict between two different ethoses. But it also represents the coming together in something which is accessible to everyone. And the theme, really, of sustainability and cultural heritage is about those conflicts and how we have to resolve, how we have to compromise sometimes, but about how we try to reconcile the value that we already have, which makes us who we are, and the value that we want to create through a buoyant economy. And cultural heritage is where these two dynamics come together. And where they work, we have sustainability. And where they don't work, we have employment disputes, civil unrest, or even armed conflict. I'll have another go at this, great. And historic cities are where these clashes between different philosophies often come together. And it's our job, it's our responsibility as citizens, as well as through our professional capabilities to find ways in which we can resolve those conflicts amicably and for the benefit of society and too often we wake up after the event and find that the discord that we were observers to has become permanent, has happened and we regret what has taken place. And in many ways we feel that we learn from those mistakes wishing that we could anticipate the issues that created them. And perhaps our sense of loss, our motivation, is driven by our desire not to make the same mistake again, whether it's of our own making or whether it's by others. It's not a great model to build society, but it's probably the longest lasting that began with Adam and Eve. And as much as we therefore want to learn and to develop we find ourselves looking at the mistakes and we look at the analysis of those mistakes and think about how we could do better and avoid the problem. And so to counterbound, counter, uh, counteract this um, problem that we keep seeing of instances like this, let's try to be optimistic about what we can contribute to 
sustainability. And I thought this was an excellent example about where sustainability starts because um, I don't usually enjoy being in buildings like this. Normally I'm walking through buildings like that. And the question is for sustainability, how far can deterioration go before we have to give up? Is that a building that has gone too far or is it redeemable? And the answer is that our professionalism is really about the coin. It's the measurable, can we physically do it? But it's the inspiration, which is the vision that says, we not only believe that we can, but that it's important that we do. And this is something that has uh, driven the creation of Europa Nostra over 50 years ago and many of its activities which I want to briefly refer to during the course of this presentation. Because Europa Nostra has a mission to portray cultural heritage as something that brings everything together that is the tangible, the economy, the intangible, the traditions, the who we are as well as the where we are. And that whatever the prevailing political an economic climate of Europe, and I have to say from Britain it's quite prevailing just at the moment, is that there are characteristics that are worth preserving, and those may be economic and they may be cultural, but ideally they should be both. We should have the coin, not two separate faces of the coin. And the way that Europa Nostra began to show how this should be possible was through an award scheme that began in 1978. And here we have an example in Salzburg, which was about the lighting of Salzburg. And you could say, why is that about sustainability? Because really it was about impressions. And one thing that we learn in economic development, as well as cultural heritage is that impressions count for a lot and if the perception is of a city that is alive and prides itself on its assets then we have the capacity to create value through the economy not just tourism but everything about the city but we also have the capacity to sustain those things which we hold dear and those awards continue. And this year, um, the awards covered several categories, ranging from conservation, but increasingly about education, awareness raising, and training. Because what we learn is that the economy is not only the cash or financial economy, but it's the economy of skills. And in the discussions that we've been having just in this conference so far is the recognition that as the Hungarian economy is boosting, is, is buoyant, that needs to be fueled with the skills and resources to sustain it. And if there is a shortage, then people cannot deliver economic gain. The awards are really showing it is possible. Somewhere, somehow, someone has achieved success, has achieved something that is exemplary, that will inspire others to follow. And perhaps when the conflicts arise and some people are saying, no, it cannot happen, others can point to real examples and say, yes, it can, yes, it did and now it is our turn. That then led us to look at the other end of the spectrum. It's great to be inspired, but when we are faced with year-on-year -year problems of buildings, cities, historic sites that are like the building I showed I uh, am responsible for, um, where it seems as though there is no hope. How can we give hope 
to those who cannot see beyond dereliction. And five years ago, Europa Nostra launched the Seven Most Endangered program. Its purpose was to identify sites that are of European significance, but where that significance is at risk through dereliction or neglect or insensitive development. And here we have one of the first rounds of seven locations that were considered to be at risk, not only for what they are, but for what they mean. And I come back to the coin again, not just for what is measurable in terms of the cost of repair, but the symbolism of what would happen if that property was lost. And in the bottom right-hand corner is the synagogue in Subodica in Serbia, Sabatka, which um, had a, uh, an it's had an uncertain future for some time. The picture on the left shows it as I knew it um, a few years ago, that clearly most of the synagogue survives. But the question is, for a building that is a steel frame, that corrosion is attacking the very fabric of its support, is it redeemable? The question was answered, yes, it is redeemable. And uh, earlier this year, Orban Victor uh, commemorated the reopening of the synagogue. It is possible to save buildings. This was another round, very different, where in the top right picture is an airport. That airport was designed in the 1930s for the Helsinki Olympics. And because of the war, the design was stalled. It, it didn't go ahead but it's one of the most significant and few surviving examples of civilian airports in Europe in a modernist design when air travel was seen as being pioneering, exciting, something that uh, stimulated the economy. And here, the Helsinki municipality want to build 25,000 houses on the airfield the risk, therefore, is not to the building directly, but to starve the building of its purpose and to remove its very lifeblood, which is the airfield. And collaborating with Europa Nostra Finland and with other agencies, we've been trying to persuade the Finnish authorities in Helsinki to change their mind. But this is really where I want to move from description to a set of questions, because this is the round that has been approved this year, which is um, across Europe. We have these seven sites, very diverse, and each site will be visited by an expert mission which is set up jointly between Europa Nostra, if you like, the conservation cultural heritage experts, and the European Investment Bank Institute, which was set up um, as part of the EIB uh, to provide loans to governments for major infrastructure projects. So they have the hard edge of banking analysis. And the one I want to share with you and ask you about is the one at the top right, which is the Bozludza Monument in Bulgaria. This is where it's located. And I'm going to just show you briefly some photographs. But what I want to do is show you a short film about the proposals that have been put to us.
It is, in many respects, one of the most remarkable buildings you will see, not just for what it is, the measurable, but for what you, what you cannot see, the immeasurable symbolism. It was built for the Bulgarian Socialist Party. It was built on a hill where the Ottoman Empire was rebuffed and therefore has national symbolism as well. It was built with the support of 6,000 people through public subscription. But though it opened in 1981, the changes in 1989 brought it to an end. This is what it was like. This is what it now is. This is what it was like. This is what it now is. And it's become a symbol that challenges the very essence of what Bulgaria is about. And what I want to do is share a short film about what people would like it to be. So if we can show the film, please. Паметникът Бузлуджа. Осем години денонощен труд. Общо шест хиляди работници. Най-добрите архитекти, инженери, художници. 70 хиляди тона бетон и 3 хиляди тона стомана. Най-големите петолъчки в света. Над хиляда квадратни метра мозайка. 16 милиона платени от народа. Защо да се опитваме да заречим миналото, вместо да приемем историята си и да погледнем бъдещето? Защо да рушим, вместо да използваме съграденото, да създадем дестинация от световен мащаб, която да открие работни места и да генерира приходи? Бузлуджа, памета на времето, превръща монумента в паметник на националната историческа памет и разказва българската история ясно, емоционално, интерактивно. Многофункционалната зала с 400 места ще бъде форум за история и изкуство. Мозайката представя периода на социализма. Дългият притъмнен коридор – османската власт, а колуарите с величествена гледка – средновековието. В три подземни зали е представена античността по българските земи. Панорамен асансьор превежда посетителите през историята чрез имената на всички български владетели. Той влиза в рубинената зала на внушителните, но щупени петолъчки метафора за периода на социализма. За да достигне залата на прехода, разширена с стъклена платформа. На финала, терасата на върха на 70-метровия пилон разкрива спираща дъха гледка и връща посетителя в реалността и настоящето на България. Perhaps, therefore, we not only have a coin that has two sides, which is the economy and the symbolism, 
but we also have the ideology. And the question is, are there some times when sustainability should not continue because of the ideology? Or is it actually something that we need the third dimension to overcome? Thank you.